Are other members, yes, sir, please come on up, identify yourself, and let's Hi, go. Uh, Sam Fieldman, I'm with Wolfpack. Uh, I was one of the people that uh, Jeff emailed. He said the three questions that he sent to a bunch of people, uh, which prompted me to take a quick look at the state level data. And first, I just wanted to point out there's a lot of, it's a really good database for the state level data uh, that can be broken down and manipulated in lots of ways to answer all kinds of interesting questions. Uh, if you look at the expenditures versus the receipts, those numbers are very close. Where they differ might tell you some interesting information about has there been an increase in self-funded candidates, has there not? Uh, and um, you can also see individual contributions. You can see how many moves from PACs into those things. Uh, also, I work with a political action committee, which is a super PAC. Uh, we, unlike the vast majority of super PACs, follow the FEC guidelines in the way that they were uh, in the spirit, not only the letter of the law. So if you look at the FEC.org and look at Wolfpack, you can see all our uh, donors were funded almost entirely by very small contributions, people making $10, $20 a month. Our largest contributions wouldn't even make the list of things that people disclose in other organizations. Um, but one thing that you should look at when you're looking at organizations and how this funding works um, is the political action committees when you look through their donors, usually it's, it's very easy uh, to hide your money when you're these kinds of organizations, but it's also very hard to hide the fact that you're hiding it. So when you're looking through those records, you'll see, for example, for political action committees, their donors will be 501c4s, and those are completely opaque. You can see for 501c4s, uh, they have uh, a form 990 that uh, tells you who all of their all of their contributions above five thousand dollars in a year, but the names are all completely redacted, so you don't know who actually is making those contributions. Some of them, but mostly they're not going to be the ones that you're interested in. Do disclose that voluntarily, but it's not required. Yeah, Jeff, let me ask you a question. The um, so you know Michael Sullivan and the Massachusetts Office of Campaign Political Finance have been very gracious, and, and you and Jeff have been talking about. Do you have a sense as to what the others, do the, uh, the other states have something equivalent or similar to what we, what you've described here in Massachusetts? Uh, I haven't looked too closely. In my experience, generally not. There's a there's enormous differences in the level of transparency in different states. There are yeah. other states that do. See, this is going to be, you know, uh, something that I'm sure we'll talk more about. The <clears throat> why the initiative is local, mm -hmm. and our access to data is obviously local. We're talking about the United States Constitution, you mm -hmm. know. So there needs to be some uh, uh, multi-state, you know, national perspective on uh, in the, if we're going to come up with something that's actionable. Uh, so anyway, just food for thought of it. What are the other states doing in yeah. terms of the stuff? Uh, it, I can tell you because I do um, a lot of Wolfpacks reporting for lobbying, and the, those things vary so incredibly widely. Uh, Massachusetts lobbying laws actually aren't uh, uh, are not among my personal favorites, um, but they they vary very widely uh, around the the country, as do this kind of data reporting. Mm, you know, we've seen. Okay. And one state, uh, a report that we filed made it look like we were big money donors because they only required our biggest donor to be on the uh, form. So you only saw our biggest donor ever, and it looked like we were funded by one person because you didn't see any, any of our others. Um, Which could be hard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and then um, uh, was, those are the two main things. Oh, also, uh, I'll be here afterwards if anybody wants to talk about it. As, as, since you're doing the the um, the uh, subcommittees uh, by not doing deliberation and just doing fact finding, I'd be happy to talk to anybody afterwards about uh, purely fact finding without any deliberation on some of the other aspects for that action committee. There's uh, I sent out, which I could happy to provide again. Um, a, a letter that summarized the majority position. I could also give you information on the minority position on the Article 5 convention process. I can give you quite a bit of information on going through Congress as well, although my expertise is in the convention side. Yeah, there's a, there's a ton out there. The, well, here we are on the 50th anniversary of landing on the moon. So was it that Kennedy said, uh, we choose to do these things, go to the moon, and these other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. <laughs>